Well, Heather, thanks so much for taking a few minutes this afternoon. I really appreciate you taking some time out of your busy schedule. Can you introduce yourself first? Tell people about who you are and what you do. Sure. So my name is Heather Monahan. I am the author of the book, Confidence Creator. I'm a professional speaker, although that's been put on hold recently <laughs> yes. because there are no events. Um, I've got a podcast called Creating Confidence with Heather Monahan, and I just signed my first book deal with HarperCollins for my second book. Congratulations. That's lots Thank of you. stuff going on. Yeah. That, that, that's really, really cool. So where, and where are you located? I live in Miami. Awesome. Awesome. So what's the situation like these days down there? I know it's a little different everywhere. Yeah, it's been, you know, a, a little sad to see that there was a lot of people still vacationing. And mm -hmm. I feel like just my limited opinion from what I see I live on the water in Miami, so I can look out my condo and I can really see everything around Miami Beach. And I was seeing a lot of people and it didn't feel like people were heeding the warnings to stay mm. in. And I, now I look and today it really looks yeah. much more controlled, which is great news. But um, yeah, I think Miami was a little slow to respond at first. <laughs> I, I know some communities really move quickly, but I, I don't feel like this was one of them. Yeah. So I definitely want to talk a little bit about that. And what I always like to at least start with is what are you grateful for today? I'm grateful for my son. Oh my gosh. I'm quarantined with him and we get along really, really well. And How he's old? hilarious. He's 12. I'm so grateful for him. I'm grateful for technology, you know, mm -hmm. to have the opportunity. I've been on Zoom so many times today. <laughs> yeah, I bet. And so it's interesting to say quarantined when you know, last night I was on a FaceTime call with so many of my friends and then, yeah. you know, it, it's just, it's so interesting because while we are physically in our mm -hmm. homes, we're still so connected with everybody, you know, so that's, I'm really grateful for that. And I'm grateful for social media because I've seen so many uplifting stories and been mm -hmm. able to share, you know, knowledge that I'm not sitting around watching TV all day because I'm working, yeah. but you know, I do stop and check my social media. And because of the people I choose to follow, I have this like constant feed of positivity and great stories and exciting stuff happening. And it's always picking up my spirits. Yeah, it's funny because people want to critique and, and say social media is the blame of all these things until it's the only thing you have. And then you realize how much it actually adds to your life. And like you said, if you selectively choose who you want to follow, you choose whether or not you surround yourself with positivity or you choose whether or not you surround yourself with people that just put fire on the things that you want to continue to bash. Like it's just, it's just an interesting perspective for sure. So I want to talk a little bit about leadership, um, whether it's in the roles you've had or situations you've seen what does good leadership to you through crisis look like constant communication is really critical when people go dark and they're in a leadership role that makes everyone else unnerved honesty as much as possible i was a chief revenue officer in media and i was told i what you know you cannot share this with the team so sometimes a leader if they're not the ultimate leader are in very difficult situations. So it's about conveying what you can and then dealing with the difficult conversations, right? You've got to be able to answer people's questions. And a lot mm -hmm. of people today, and I went through this in 08 with the recession as you know, a leader in corporate America back then, you know, having to sit with people and let them know, I can't guarantee your job right now. You know right. what? No one can guarantee a job right now. And it's, that part of it is very similar for me now, you know, in mm. this situation and environment. And it's like anything, the first time you see the movie, you don't know if there's ever going to be a sequel, right? Yeah. Like I, I remember in 08, I thought this is it. It, life is over the way I used to know it. And I'm never going to make good money again. And I'm never going to have a great team again. And this, I remember having those moments because I didn't know better here today. Yeah. I'm 45 and I'm 20, whatever, you know, however many years later, I know better. I know. Right. Okay. And this is what's important for younger people to understand. And this is where leadership's important is that you might not have gone through a similar situation, but others have that are older than you. Hmm. And it's really important for people to know this isn't the end of the road. And yeah, could the economy take a, a hit? Absolutely, but we're going to be okay. The economy is actually cyclical. And so it doesn't just always stay in a growth phase and that's okay and we can survive that. And it's about what you choose to do in those downturns 
just like what you choose to do in the upturns that mm -hmm. will impact your life today and tomorrow. Great. So literally was the next question I was going to ask is, can you look back at a time that you went through something that seemed so hard and then you look back and you're like, without that, that wouldn't have been, I wouldn't be where I'm at today, but that kind of is, <laughs> that, that kind of is the answer that you just gave, which is, which is really great. Yeah, it was really a similar time, 08, 09, where people were losing their jobs left and right. I remember my building, everybody was foreclosing because I live in Miami and a lot of people have these homes as second homes and they just decided to walk away from them. This is my primary home. So they did an assessment in my building and the, the remaining people that stayed had to cover the monthly payments for the people that left. And I was, my pay was cut, you know, by... 30%, I think I had to take on a second job in my office on top of being, I was a VP of sales at the time. I had to take on another role because they fired so many people. They could, I was working around the clock not seeing my <laughs> child. My income was going down and my expenses were accelerating and that time. And I had to let go a ton of my workforce, which was heart wrenching. Mm -hmm. So going through that time was awful, but what came out of it was a lot. Of, that company was toxic that I was in. I wasn't aware of it at the time now that I'm out of it. But so many of those people that were let go ended up in greater positions and better companies and would message me on social media and say like, oh my God, I didn't know it that day, <laughs> yeah, but I'm yeah. so lucky that happened because I found my way and now I own my own company or I do this or that. And so all these things unfold, even though they seem to be the end of the world in the moment, that's the second to just say, okay, take a deep breath. Things are going to be okay. I've got to have faith in that and in myself. And what can I do now to move myself forward? That's great, great advice. So real quick then, so you have an interesting perspective too, because you have a 12 year old. Leadership with a, a, a child, like how, how, how do you, what kind of questions, like I have a four year old and two year old, so they don't ask the same questions that a 12 year old would. Like what's, what's their perspective right now in this whole thing or what's his perspective and how, how do you balance that as a parent, right? Because you don't want to, you don't want to give scared, you don't want to make a kid scared about things either, but how do you, how do you feel like you navigate that well? I wake up every day and I say to myself, okay, this is my opportunity to lead right now. And I mean with him, the person I'm quarantined mm -hmm. with, right? Like whoever you're quarantined with, you have an opportunity to show up as a leader or a liability. That's up to you. Mm -hmm. And I don't care who you're living with. It's your choice. Mm -hmm. So I, the first thing I say when my feet hit the ground is this is my opportunity to lead right now. And how do I want to lead? I first want to set an intention. And for this week, I wanted to say, I'm very hopeful. And, you know, I'm focusing on the great things that are happening, like UPS stepping up to help out the entire country, like this Abbott, you know, pharmaceuticals, um, laboratories, creating this five minute turnaround time for testing. We didn't know about any of this stuff a week ago. Mm -hmm. The FDA just approved a new drug to, to combat COVID-19. So there's so many amazing things happening and I choose and I set that intention to be hopeful that there's going to be more positivity and more things that we're not aware of coming towards us. And I lead with that attitude. I, I let that be known. I lead with gratitude. And we always talk about what we're grateful for. And I'm really grateful. I happen to have a child that I, I get along really well with. And I know that isn't the case for everyone. Mm -hmm. So I really am so thankful in this time that I can be in a small condo in Miami with another person that I happen to love and I'm getting to spend more time with than I ever have before, you know? So there's this unfolding of things that are stressful and challenging yet, you know, focus, you could, where you focus, your attention goes, your efforts mm -hmm. go, you can focus on, am I sad? I'm not out speaking at events I have planned and I'm not getting that income. Of course I am. I mean, right. who wouldn't be right. Number one, I love what I do and I have so much fun. I get exhilarated. Number two, I need my money. Like yeah. that's my, that's my primary income stream. Okay. But if I sit around and focus and dwell on that, that's not going to bring the events back. Yep. It's about how can I shift and pivot and use this time to expand my business either for the future or in a different direction in a multi-platform way so that I can better my company, my business, myself, my family, whatever it may be. Yeah, I think that's a great way. And I think that's a perspective a lot of people just are not good at is they, 
want to be stuck in this mentality of woe is me and and I wish this wasn't this way and I wish this but there's nothing any of us can do about the current situation like we have no sort of say that can make things come back to normal so all we really can do is to choose what we do during the time and that's it and like all of us are in that exact same situation regardless there's some businesses that are affected more than others and some like yourself that you know I kind of as a as a brand of yourself you kind of you are hit really big in this kind of way because like you said a lot of your stuff is in person and events that they get canceled but yet you still are smiling you're still positive you're still trying to look on the bright side and think about what you can do even though that's happening which is just it's a mindset it's yeah and it's a choice because what you put out there i promise it comes back to you i have a very good friend who has a tendency to go spiral negative. And from day one, that started happening. She started telling me, I'm going to get COVID-19. I'm getting, I know it. <laughs> Guess who got COVID-19? <laughs> she did. Am I shocked? No, I'm actually not. And I don't mean that in a mean way. Of course, I love this girl. And I, all I want is for her to be healthy and good. And she's getting better actually now after a week um, of having some really tough days. But sometimes it's like the more you put something out to the universe and the world, the more you're almost creating and manifesting that opportunity. So when I hear people say that, oh, I know it's going to end up happening. I say, oh, why are you setting yourself up like this? Instead, let's talk about, yeah. I know I'm going to survive this. I know I'm a survivor. I know other times I've come through hard times. I know I'll come out on top. Yeah. And when you put that out to the world, you're putting it out to you most importantly in your intentions and yeah I, I've gone to the store a couple times I went to Whole Foods twice and I wear gloves and I sanitize everything and I'm <laughs> super careful but you know what I I go with positivity and I, I speak to people that are working there I thank them for being there I try to be grateful try to be positive and of course there's moments where I cry and and feel sad and and worry for the whole world that's normal mm -hmm. but you know what I just don't stay there it's great. Really good stuff. So what last piece of advice can you give to someone that is, is struggling with this situation, not just financially, but just in general, right? They can feel like it, it can be easy to feel alone in certain situations to feel like, man, when's this going to end? But what, what keeps you smiling? Obviously you've said some of those things already, but what's kind of your final piece of advice for people maybe going through what feels like a really difficult time that haven't experienced some of the things you have? You know, I remember that this reminds me of when I first got divorced and I had a one-year-old and I was so down. How would I have a positive life again? What would I do? And I remember walking by a movie store. This is back when there still were, this is a decade ago, there were blockbusters. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to watch a Disney movie tonight because it'll be nice and uplifting. And what, something very special happens when you start watching these movies with like really big positive messages. You start feeling hopeful. You start feeling optimistic. You start listening to podcasts that are with people who are motivating and inspiring. Yeah. Right now you just might be living at home with yourself and that might be challenging. However, you can surround yourself with any voice that you want. You can surround yourself with my voice. You can go get download my podcast right now. I'll be there with you every step of the way. You can listen to those episodes. You can surround yourself with people that will pick you up and uplift you, or you can go attach yourself to the media and really consume yourself mm -hmm. and start going on a downward spiral. But that is your choice. And thankfully with technology, there's so many opportunities. I started watching a show that had been recommended to me the other day and my son said, mom, this is kind of depressing. And I said, you know what? It is a little depressing. I really wanted to give it a shot because my friend said it was great, but right now isn't the right time for us right. to watch this. We could watch it another time. And it was a great observation he made. Like I was so committed to watching it because my girlfriend said, you're going to love this series. It's just not the right time for us to watch it. So we just yeah. shut it off and like, we'll move on to something else. And you know, it's, it's just about that that choice and that being aware and just continuing to pursue and find the people that make you feel better instead of the ones that pull you down. Great stuff. Really, really appreciate your time, Heather. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me.